Welcome back to Anton Math, and in this video we're going to be focusing on the inverse of our cosine function, our inverse cosine function. So we have our little table here. Uh, we used this in the last video when we were looking at the inverse of sine. And we're just going to kind of follow. I'm not going to talk too much about repeating what I did at the beginning of last video about inverse functions in general. You should have watched that already. Um, but if we're looking at our res a restricted cosine of x, how we denote that we denote it as cosine, this reads cosine inverse of x, right, it has that little power of negative 1 before my argument, or you can, you can write this as arc cosine of x, and that just means the exact same thing. Okay, now, uh, just like with sine, we need to restrict our domain for cosine so that uh, we don't have any repetition or we don't, you know, we, we want to have that one-to-one -one correspondence. Now cosine's a little bit different. If I look at cosine from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, we have this little hump. So that same restriction that we used for sine isn't going to work with cosine. Uh, that's going to be like kind of an upside down x squared and we saw in the last video that doesn't work, does it? So the restricted um, domain for cosine's a little bit different. We're going to restrict cosine from 0 to pi. So it's going to look something like this. All right, so this is pi right here. But we still have that it goes up to 1 and it goes down to negative 1, right? So we can see here the horizontal line test, if we draw any horizontal line that we want, it doesn't cross through this graph more than once. So there's one unique x for every value of y. So there's going to be a unique value of y for every value of x. And we're OK. We're good to go. So we can define an inverse function, cosine inverse, um, for this restricted domain. Now let me go ahead and draw out what that inverse function looks like over here. Uh, if we were to graph that inverse function, it'll look a little bit something like this, right? Now here my x values here are going from negative 1 to 1, and my y values are going from 0 to pi. Right? Now this graph makes sense when you look at our defined by. I, I didn't come back to that last time. Let's go ahead and jump ahead and do that. There's not much that's going to change there from what we did before. If I have that cosine of x, uh, actually let me do this backwards a little bit. If I have that cosine inverse of x equals y, that's the same thing as, right, that's what this little double arrow symbol in layman's terms kind of means, means that's the same thing as, these are equivalent statements, um, cosine of y equals x. So look over here, this is my graph of cosine inverse of x equals y. But if I had the function cosine of y equals x, it would look exactly like this, right? We're taking this as cosine of x equals y over here. Basically, I'm exchanging the roles that x and y are playing and drawing it over here. It looks a little bit funky. It's kind of like you're, you've um, twisted it so this top of the x-axis is up top, and then you're looking at it from the other side, like if it were uh, on a window, you went to the other side of the window. But I won't go to, into too much depth. Uh, you don't need to know that much about this. But suffice it to say, this is what the uh, graph of our cosine looks like. Okay, so now let's look at our properties. I see that my domain over here on the left for restricted cosine is going to be from 0 to pi. And again, I'm using the closed brackets. Important to note that 0 and pi are both included in this. And my range is going to go from negative 1 to 1. And because these are inverse functions, I know that my range and domain switch places. So my domain of my inverse function is going to be negative 1 to 1. And my range of my inverse function is going to be 0 to pi. Now I have cancellation laws here. Okay, and Cancellation laws for cosine. If I have cosine of cosine inverse of x, I can cancel this cosine and cosine inverse. And this is going to be equal to x only for Right? Well, let's take a step back. We know that this is only going to work for x's that are inside of the domain of cosine inverse. Right? For any x outside the domain of cosine inverse, this does not exist. Now on the other side, for any x that is inside the domain of cosine inverse, this will have a value. And we know that cosine has a value for everything. So it's going to work OK. Right? That's going um, to be all right. So we're really looking for x's 
inside of my domain for cosine inverse for this first cancellation law. Now for my second cancellation law, I'm looking at cosine inverse of cosine of x. And we want to know when does that equal x? Well, that's going to equal x for x inside my restricted domain for cosine. I know there's a one-to-one -one correspondence only when x is inside this restricted domain. Now because of that, I can think of this as canceling. So let's document that. That's for, oops, not negative, cosine. What's going on? There we go. That's for x between 0 and pi, right, inside my restricted domain there. Now remember, this first cancellation law, if x is outside negative 1 to 1, this cosine does not exist. So this doesn't even have a solution. It's not necessarily that it's not equal to x exactly, it's that it doesn't have a solution at all. This second one, remember, this will still have a solution, but that's because cosine has a solution that is inside the domain for cosine inverse. So we'll get a solution. It's just not necessarily going to be x. It's going to be something else. Okay. So that's all of the information for uh, inverse cosine. Now we're going to go ahead and do some examples. It's blue. Let's say, let's look at cosine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2. All right, now remember what this means is, where does cosine equal the square root of 2 inside of my restricted domain? I know cosine is going to be a positive square root of 2 in quadrant 1. And uh, inside my restricted domain, that's going to be when um, x equals, sorry, this x over here, when this x equals pi over 6, right? Oh, no, I did that wrong. When this x, y, I guess, equals pi over 6. OK, I'm just being confusing. So this is going to be pi over 6, right? I know that cosine of pi over 6 equals root 3 over 2. So inverse cosine of root 3 over 2 equals pi over 6, because pi over 6 is in my restricted domain. Now how about, uh, as an easy one, cosine inverse of 0. Now I choose 0, it's a little bit tricky. 0 is in both my uh, domain and range. So which way are we going? you got to keep in mind which side's going to be the radians, which side's going to be these real numbers between negative 1 and 1. But you can always ask yourself, well, cosine of what equals 0? Cosine inverse of 0 equals something. That's the same as saying cosine of something equals 0. And I know that cosine equals 0 at 0, right? Or no, no, sorry. <laughs> cosine equals 0 at pi over 2. All right. Uh, now let's look at some of these cancellation law ones. Uh, these are all pretty straightforward. Um, when we get into the next chapter, we'll start doing a lot more with these inverse functions. But this section is really more of an introduction um, and learning these cancellation laws. So let's look at cosine inverse of cosine 2 pi over 3. Now, we had 2 pi over 3 last time. And remember, we had to evaluate this on the inside in order to evaluate the cosine inverse. But we always need to keep in mind, cosine and sine do not have the same restricted domain. So 2 pi over 3 is, um, this bottom one, is between 0 and pi, right? It's a, it's a bit less than pi. So I can apply my cancellation laws here, in this case for cosine, and this will be 2 pi over 3. All right. So that's an easy one when we can apply those cancellation laws. And just a practice for when we can't, let's say I have cosine inverse of cosine of 5 pi over 3. Well, 5 pi over 3 is bigger than pi, so I can't use my cancellation laws here. So what I need to do is I need to evaluate the cosine on the inside first. And I know that cosine of 5 pi over 3 is equal to 1 half. Right? This is in quadrant 4 with a reference number of pi over 3. And cosine inverse of 1 half, well, um, oh, we didn't do this one yet. Cosine inverse of 1 half, that's when does cosine equal 1 half? in quadrant 1, right, because this is positive. So that's going to be at pi over 3. All right, that's it for uh, inverse cosine. In the next video, we're going to talk about the inverse tangent function.